Awesome. Well, I will go into the state. I'm going to charge up. It takes me a little bit, about a minute or two to, you know, summon these energies and then merge with them. So I'm going to go ahead and step into that state and I'll see you at the end. Okay, perfect. It is our species' highest joy and passion to be able to have this particular co-creative interaction with you this day. How are you doing? Hi, Oak. I'm doing well. Thank you for joining us. Yes, you are so welcome. How may we be of assistance or service to you in your explorations of physical reality? Well, I've got a whole bunch of questions that we that I might ask. Um, so, should I just should I just start and maybe we can just have a, a dialogue? Yes, that is all right with us. Great. The first question, I, I've uh, this is the third time I've had the chance to ask you questions, actually, a couple of Tyler's private sessions. But the first time I said, it's great to meet you. And you said something like, actually, we might have encountered each other before. And I, I didn't get to follow up on that, but I, I'm really curious uh, what you meant by that. There are a few different meanings that we're implying through what we have shared. The idea is all interactions with us that you experience through channeling like this are the result of underlying energetic relationships and experiences that have been had by those whom are engaging with us through the channeling on other levels. So for many of you, this represents astral encounters, either through meditation or through your dreaming states. For some individuals, it represents me knowing what you might call their future selves, whom have existences within my civilization. In addition to this, my species is not bound by space or time. We understand that both are properties that exist within our consciousness and through understanding the nature of consciousness, these types of things can be manipulated or can be bended in different ways. So we have at times interacted with what you might call some of your past lives or past selves through the idea of our species being able to project our consciousness into different frequencies of space and time that you would call past self or past life realities. So generally speaking, whenever we share with people we have interacted before, we are normally referring to one of these three major means of interacting. Now, for yourself personally, if you would like this, we are able to share this. Yes, yeah, please. You have a particular, what we call oversoul connection. And the oversoul connection represents in many ways, a high frequency nodal point of consciousness that expands, you could say outwardly into different realities, expressing as different incarnations. And you yourself have a particular future lifetime that exists within my culture within my civilization. So this is one of the ways that we are able to recognize your frequency. In addition to this, we have had interactions with you on the astral, more so in dream states. Cool. Uh, so, so this future version of myself, is that someone you know? Is that like a friend of yours? What? <laughs> Can you that, that part we will be brief on because there's a bit to unpack there. However, we have interacted in that way directly. We are all friends. We are all family within my civilization. So yes to that. However, there has been direct interactions between myself and what you would call your future counterpart. Cool. Does that future counterpart have a name? There are vibrational terms that you can utilize as a means of contacting this particular being. It would translate as the closest representation that you would understand as a name 
but it's not actually the being's name. It's in a sense, just a tonal frequency used to summon forth this being's signature frequency. So it would translate to many of you as a name, but we do not utilize names in the same way. If we were to actually utilize names, they would be very fluid because we are always changing, we are always evolving. Therefore, different names at different times would more accurately represent us than perhaps names that are hardwired, such as what many of you create within your physical reality experience through the names that you are given at birth. The term that you can use that can invoke this being is the following. Masha. If you were to spell that out, it would be something like M-A-S-H-A, -A, Masha. Okay, cool. And that's a tonal frequency. That's, is that like a phone number, like a, like a way, uh, like a contact point? Exactly. Yes. Yes. It's a term that's used to represent this counterpart signature frequency. So it's the closest thing you have to a name. And it also does function like a phone number. Cool. <laughs> that's exciting. Um, gosh, um, I, my, my intention is, you know, some of the questions that I'm asking may be more personal because they came to me and some meant for a broader audience, but I'm trusting that you'll be able to share things that all the listeners will be able to benefit from. So, so my next question, my next question will be sort of personal in a way. Um, I had someone tell me that uh, this was someone that was looking into my future and they said, in a couple of years, you'll be working a lot with kids because kids are going to really help humanity uh, progress and evolve. Can you, could you say anything about, about that? All right. We'll talk about it like this. Within your modern educational system, there are only so many subjects that are covered. And these subjects, while they are of great utility, really only scratch the surface of what is existing as a dormant capability within every single human being. Other forms of education, what you call alternative education, such as what you're in a sense providing here, can activate those seemingly dormant capabilities within people, but also within children. And when those capabilities are awakened at a young age, it allows for the children that are being born onto your planet now to evolve in a very accelerated way where they can make leaps and bounds in their mastering of certain skills and in their remembering of who and what they are. The children that are born today do not go through the same type of forgetting that many of you have gone through, through being born here on earth. Even though these children may not have visual memories, although some of them do, that represents their pre-incarnate self, they're able to feel a very strong connection to those energies and those dimensions. So both consciously and unconsciously, they channel the energies of spirit, what you call the other side, through them, through their lives, through their expressions, which acts as a reminder for all of you, the adults, so you can also connect to those levels more easily. And when a child is shared at an appropriate pace, the information that is designed to awaken more of those dormant capabilities, it allows for them to shine even more brightly into the reality, and it allows for them to act as a living symbol for what happens when you do not sacrifice the youth, but include the youth in the process of evolution, which archetypally would translate as what you call the enlightened child, which is an archetype that exists within all of you. Many of your spiritual practitioners embody this. Even though they may be 80 years old, they are still laughing, they are still being silly, <laughs> and they have not closed their heart. And that's what all of these children who are coming to your planet now are embodying. Mm, that's, uh, I feel very uplifted by that thought. Is there specific things that 
you suggest teaching these kids? Well, it all comes down to what are you personally excited to teach? Because whatever you are personally inspired or excited to teach will automatically attract in people whom are ready to receive that. So when each of you fully embodies the skill sets, both overt and subtle, that represent your passion and your excitement, and you then reach a point in your journey where you're ready to share that with people, you will automatically begin to attract others who are ready to receive it. And children are no different. Okay. So each teacher with their own uh, part that they're excited to share. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Are there things that uh, sort of even more broadly than children you think would really benefit the progression of humanity at this point in time? In general, deep connection and relationship with your earth, with your planet. We're going to speak metaphorically here. However, there's a great deal of direct literal meaning behind this as well. Okay. On the subterranean levels, you have the idea of the different crystalline networks that exist, massive crystalline structures. These structures have been programmed with energy by extraterrestrial beings and by your ancestors who were in shamanic connection to them and by what you would call your past selves or past lives whom have channeled into those crystals their skill sets, their memories, their abilities, their experiences. So when you, as the future self, the modern self, the current self in that way, connect into the earth and draw energy up from the earth and form a link between yourself and the planet, you begin to access this. You begin to bring it into you as an energetic frequency. You go into resonance with it. And it allows for you to step into more of who and what you truly are. The earth also, as you know, is able to compost and can take waste and can transform it into flowers. The earth can also take and receive any negative energy that you wish to let go of. So it doesn't have to build up in your field, doesn't have to build up in your body. You can give these energies to the earth. And the earth interprets this as a blessing, it interprets this as a gift, and it will share with you resources. It will share with you power. It will share with you experiences that are all reflective of your own unique relationship to your true nature. So cultivating a deep relationship with your planet at this time is of the utmost importance in relationship to the idea of your species ascension or awakening process. And does that look like touching the earth or walking in the woods? Or what does that look like? Often? It can look like that. Yes, that's one way. Absolutely. And positive effect, positive benefit can absolutely be received just on that level. You can also begin to work on the etheric level or the astral level. These represent the underlying energetic levels of reality that are, let's just say, obfuscated slightly by your experience of physical form. So if you can train yourself to work with that underlying energetic level, you can form what you might consider to be energetic cords that link your feet and your body deep down into the earth. These cords, which are in many ways symbolic for the idea of connection, can in a sense be used as cables. So information, energy can be inhaled up from the earth deep within, up through the cables into the body. And that's one way you can absorb some of that information stored within the crystalline structures. In addition to this, these energy cords or cables that you generate can also be used to send energy that you wish to let go of down into the earth. So through visualization, through breathing exercises, you can begin to awaken some of those properties. And there's different exercises, different techniques that can be utilized for those purposes. Okay, okay. Um, 
Do you want to, is this a good time? Do you want to share one of those techniques? All right. This is a very basic one. We will explain it like this. Just as your lungs and your nose are able to take in air and oxygen, so is every single pore of your body able to do the same. There are certain locations on the body that are very capable of absorbing and receiving and even sending energy. We'll give you a few of them for the purpose of this exercise. You have the idea of the centers of your palms. If you wish, you may take your thumb and just gently massage each palm in a spiraling manner. Awakening the energy centers within the palms. The other point we would encourage you to become aware of is your mid-eyebrow point. Not quite the third eye, just below between the eyebrows. The final point is what you call your crown chakra, which corresponds with the location you call the fontanelle, the soft spot on the mm. baby. This would be the next point. These points are very capable of absorbing and sending energies. For the exercise, bring the tip of your tongue up to the roof of the mouth, a few centimeters behind the front teeth. Should you touch the backs of the front teeth and roll the tongue back a little bit, you will feel a slight cavern or depression within the roof of the mouth. Place the tongue tip gently here, and this opens up the aura, it opens up the energy center so energy can flow in a more expansive and harmonious way. From here, the idea is become aware of the most positive feeling that you can recall or that you can create in this moment. You can think of an image or a person or a place or an experience or a dream that assists you in really deepening your sensation of that feeling. And as you Become aware of this sensation. Form on your face a loving smile. Allow for the smile to expand. And as you outwardly smile, become aware of the energetic level behind the smile. And feel yourself both outwardly and inwardly smiling with love, smiling with appreciation. What we're going to do now is use the hand. As you inhale, bring the hands forth and imagine you're scooping the feeling, pulling it in to these points, the palms, mid eyebrow crown. Inhale, smile, gather the feeling. Turn the palms so they're facing towards the ground. Become aware of the feet and exhale down through the feet into the earth. Inhale, smile, gathering the loving feeling. Palms facing down, exhale down through the feet. And one more time, smile, inhale. Exhale down through the feet. On the most basal level, this represents strengthening those cables, those cords between your body and the earth. This is forming that link. We'll take this a little deeper, just a little bit. We're going to show you how to release whatever it is you wish to release into the earth. This may not be a one and done, but you will notice through repetition of this, things will feel lighter you will begin to feel a little bit more weightless. And you may find that it provides in many ways a sense of relief from different sensations. And this has to do with you giving those things that you have stored in the aura and body to the earth so it can be composted and converted into something even more beautiful. So the idea is inhale, drawing in the loving feeling. This time, Pick one thing you wish to let go of. Conceptualize that one thing as smoke. And as you exhale, affirm within your mind, you are placing that thing within the smoke and you're letting it go into the earth. As you exhale, 
See the smoke leave through the feet. Push the smoke down with the hands through the body, out through the feet. Inhale, smile, gathering the love. Palms facing down. Exhale, place whatever you wish into the smoke. Exhale it down through the feet into the earth. And one more time, inhale, gathering in the loving feeling. Exhale the smoke, push it down through the body, out through the feet. And take your hands, covering your belly button. On your next inhale, think of all of the love you have generated. That love is a substance, it's an energy, it's a currency, it can be stored within you, like money in a bank account, if you will. Inhale and imagine all of that love comes into your intestines, level with the navel in the center of the body, and see that energy as golden light and see it form into a sphere. Inhale, drawing the energy in as you cover the navel. Hold the breath. See the sphere form and instruct the energy to stay here and to build a loving power within you. Exhale and see that golden sphere solidify a little bit. And now take the hands, give them a clap. Rub them together so they're nice and warm and gentle patting of the head. This will awaken the physical mind in a balanced way so you can return to your experience of physical reality so you're not too drifty because when you're doing this, you are working on that etheric level which is higher in vibration than the physical reality. So the massaging of the face assists you in not getting too spacey, assists you in being grounded and rooted so you can be there and be present for your physical life. And that's the way you can end the exercise. Another thing we'll say is when we describe pushing the energy down, we're not talking about using force by any means. Do not use muscle, do not strain in any way. Allow for the body to remain relaxed the entire time. It is more of a mental or energetic sense of pushing rather than physical. Mm, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, I feel great. I just did that along with you and I, uh, <laughs> it feels wonderful. <laughs> Anything you wish to let go of without exception can be given to the earth. Hmm. At a certain point, that link gets so strong, you become capable of letting go of bigger and bigger and bigger things. And the more of you that practice this, should you practice it as a team or as a group, the more that transformative energy will ripple throughout okay. the world. Speaking of groups, this question is about uh, community. And one thing that I've heard many people talking about recently is there's a lot of systems and structures that people think are failing. They're not up to what we need them to be. Uh, myself, I'm working on a project to envision and create a, a community. Do you have any advice about what types of communities or structures or systems uh, we, we could be thinking about that would be really helpful right now? What we would encourage is pay attention to the hunter-gatherer tribes that exist on your world, whom are very communal, whom interact with one another in group dynamics that involve sharings, oftentimes in circular formations, and work together as a team. And this can allow for you to tap into the ancestral memory within you that remembers being a part of a loving, supportive tribe or group. The idea is, before your species went through what is described as the fall, which is really just a descent in vibration, your species was primarily breatharian and fruitarian in nature. And your species truly was one family. Mm. 
And there are dimensions of your cellular memory, your genetic memory that know this. And the hunter-gatherer tribes and some of the ways that they relate to one another and communicate with one another represent an ancestral yet modern connection to that time. So if you learn their ways, you will find that you can create with a loving heart and intention, a community that will also mirror that intention. Mm. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm, I'm curious about this city that I live in, St. Louis, and it's, uh, it's had some historical important moments, but it seems to be at a place where it's kind of, uh, I don't know, run down. It's not, not that great of a place, but there's a lot of, we have rivers here. We have, you know, a lot of, it's, it's the center of this continent to some degree. Could you, could you talk about, is there potential for this actual physical place here of St. Louis? Absolutely. The fact that it is surrounded by the beauty of the natural world that you have described indicates that it too possesses a great deal of natural beauty that perhaps just hasn't been cultivated by the occupants of the city, but it still exists as a dormant potential nevertheless. So through different types of energetic workings, through different types of blessings, and through different types of shamanic workings with the land and the neighboring energy centers, all types of positive vibrations and energies can be introduced into the collective consciousness of the city. And this will enable that natural beauty, that natural creativity, that natural love that exists within the hearts of all people that occupy it to become more overt, to begin to awaken. So you understand the phrase, if you wish to see a change in your world, you must be the change yourself. And as you begin to explore your own natural relationship with beauty, with love, and you blend that with the earth and the power centers of the earth that are proximal to you in the city, it automatically ripples. Because fundamentally, you are all one being. There's many names for this being, God, source, all that is. You are all this. You all contain this within you. Therefore, even though the forms and the personas may be different, the underlying life force, that original level that exists within all of you, is identical, exactly the same. So as you make a change within yourself, because you are all beings that you experience, it means on a certain level, all other beings that you experience have made that change, whether they consciously recognize it or not. Hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, I, was, uh, I was talking with someone yesterday about gold. <clears throat> and I feel like there's more than meets the eye. It's more than just pretty metal or something to be used for money. Uh, are there other properties of gold that, that make it so valuable around the universe? Yeah, we'll talk about it on a biological level. It can, in many ways, preserve genetic integrity. And also, we're just going to give this disclaimer. This isn't medical advice. This is something the channel has asked us to specifically share so people understand our perspective a little bit more clearly. So be responsible with this information. It can preserve genetic integrity. It can also boost the function of the nervous system, increasing its conductivity and its ability to communicate electrical signals throughout the system. And this occurs within each cell of the body, including the neuronal cells that are connected to your brain, your heart, and your intestines. So on a biological level, it improves cognition, it can improve energy, and it can preserve the physical form in different ways. Now, on more of an esoteric level or spiritual level, it is solar in nature. It corresponds with what you call your sun. 
not just your physical sun, but the energetic levels of the sun that you're constantly being exposed to just through being on earth. So gold also allows for this solar link, this solar connection to awaken. Psychologically, energetically, this corresponds to what you call Christ consciousness, the awakening of the heart center, the illumination of that one heart, that one source that links all of you, which was one of the major teachings of Yeshua that was over time misinterpreted for different reasons. So gold can assist you in awakening that heart link in a way that ultimately will enable you to, through love and acceptance and non-duality, to see every being as you, to see every being as source, to see every being as the divine. That is one of the unique properties of gold. There are many other properties, however, at this time, that is the most relevant one for us to share. Cool. I dig it. Uh, <laughs> mm, okay, gosh, there's, I mean, there's so many questions. Um, time, time cycles. <laughs> this is something um, that we're, we're seeing echoes of things in our society that seems like we should have learned them in the past, but now we're re-experiencing them, like, them again. You've already talked about the idea of past lives. Um, could you talk about, uh, do, does human culture experience time cycles in some way? Yes. Yeah. Now you might experience that linearly, but that's just because you are in a realm where space and time are really maximized in particular ways. So you can have the experience of the hero's journey, which is a process of linear unfoldment for the most part. To us, in terms of its geometry, it is a spiral in nature, the hero's journey and that upward momentum of evolution. Recognize that the past and the future exist right here, right now, because all things exist right here, right now. There's nowhere else for anything to be because there's only one moment. The only thing that separates your experience of the past, the future, and the present are the vibrational differences that make up the unique properties of space and time relevant to what you call the past, the future, and the present. But without those frequencies of space time creating the sense of separation, you would experience the present, past, and future happening simultaneously. That's how we see these things. So it's not that the past creates the present. It's not that the future creates the present. The present moment creates the present and the present moment also creates the versions of the past you're connecting to and the versions of the future that you're connecting to. So through being in the present moment, you organize your relationships to past and future in a way that is based on whatever state of being you're in. And that state of being represents how you're thinking, how you're acting, how you're feeling. So based on those things, you get to organize the versions of past and future that you connect with. Now, your species is going through its own evolutionary process and the civilizations of the past and the civilizations of the future are also going through their own evolutionary processes as well. And at certain points in your here and now journey, you will be going through a theme, a challenge and experience that vibrationally parallels the challenges or experiences that are connected to the past civilizations and the challenges in the experience that are connected to future civilizations, future realities. And when that vibrational paralleling or resonance occurs, it can translate in your here and now as processing the karma of the past, overcoming the challenges of the past, but really what you're dealing with are modern challenges unique to your civilization that are vibrationally similar or are vibrationally resonant to the challenges and themes of the past. And in that way, when you choose to overcome those challenges with love, with appreciation, with your true power, because the past and the future and the present all exist at once, 
that information that you use to overcome your own unique challenges is then broadcasted to the past. So those past civilizations can then draw upon what you are cultivating to overcome their challenges. And in a sense, you create the effect of actually shifting the past. And that doesn't mean you're changing the objective past because there's truly no objective past. Hmm. You create your version of the past, as we have said, through your vibration in the here and now. But to you, that may look like the actual storyline of your past changing. And many of you have experienced this through what is known as the Mandela effect. That's a symptom of this process. Interesting. And the Mandela effect is where different parts of the population remember significant events differently. Exactly. They have vibrationally tuned themselves to different frequencies of the past through having made significant vibrational changes in the present. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, so we, there's a, there's an episode of the Simpsons where Homer Simpson says, that sounds like a problem for future Homer. Could we just let our future selves deal with all this, uh, so that we don't well, have to remember you become that future self every second. You are in the process of becoming that. So at some point you'll have to deal with it in the here and now. That does not mean the entire burden rests on your shoulders, because when you deal with these things in the here and now from a positive state, as we have said, the here and now creates your experience of the future. That's not just the instant future. In other words, a second into the future. That represents levels of the future that are totally unknown to many of you. Years, decades, generations you are coding for in the here and now. And when you choose to be in that positive state and to face your challenges with love, with support, with power, then the idea is you are automatically connecting to versions of the future where those challenges have already been transformed. And your future self then begins to guide you as you experience yourself in the present moment. So you overcome those challenges with greater levels of ease and efficacy and support. And in that way, you and the future self can work like a team. At a certain point, should you cultivate that relationship, it will become as clear to you as your relationships with physical people in your experience. That's how solid that link can get, where you form a very deep communication stream between yourself and the future self you're connecting to. And it allows for you to work as a co-creative team and that unlocks for you in terms of your experience, many different types of realities that you would classify as miraculous. Ooh, this is exciting stuff. This is good stuff. Yeah, yes, this is why we share it and we are deeply appreciative of you receiving it in the way that you are. <laughs> I have one more question and I also wanna leave time for you if there's anything you wanna share. All right. The question is, um, I'm a big fan of, of using dream time and, and adventuring in dream time and, and uh, using it to get information. Do you have any suggestions on um, a good way to, to use dream time? There are many different ways you can explore it. Just as you can do many things in your physical world that are beneficial to you, the same is the case on the dream world because the dream world for the most part is what you call the astral realm which is in a sense, a watery reflection of the physical world, but it is also a watery reflection of the spirit realm. It's sort of in the middle. So when you are in the astral realm, when you are lucid in your dreams, the idea is that you are capable of honing certain skills that you are working on honing in the physical reality. You can also do what you call healing work, in that astral realm that will have a ripple effect into the physical body. You can also receive education. You can receive teachings and messages from the beings of the astral realm. And you can also explore. You can see other dimensions. You can see other worlds. You can see other lifetimes. So you can use it as a form of an adventure. It's really up to you how you choose to use it. The key here is to remember what we have said, 
the astral realm is like water. And as you know, water can create optical illusions. So be mindful that you do not interpret things on that astral realm too literally. It is a realm of symbolism, living symbols, much like what we speak. So whatever you perceive, no matter how positive, no matter how negative, no matter how neutral, see the experience as a symbol. Interpret it in as many ways as you can and select the meaning that to you really resonates with your original spirit, your heart, your true self. And that's how you can use the experiences in the astral realm in a practical, positive way that is integrated with your physical reality instead of discordant to it. There are many ways you can accelerate your energy before bed without overly stimulating your nervous system. So that way, what you call your awareness can remain active as you drift into sleep. Just as you have the ability through gazing meditations to pick a singular point of focus and to also use your peripheral vision to take in the surrounding visual stimuli, you can do the same thing with a point on the body. In particular, what you call your mid-eyebrow point, or even your third eye point. And if you wish the crown chakra, although that one's a little more powerful, so perhaps it would be beneficial to work up to that. <laughs> you can place your attention onto one of these points and keep the attention gentle. We're not talking about focus. We're talking about gentle attention, just as you would watch a sunset, just as you would watch or listen to a waterfall that type of attention. And the idea is as you are breathing into the point, let yourself just go into a deeper state of relaxation. And eventually you will become so relaxed, you will begin to drift into sleep. Some sleeping postures may be more supportive for this than others. However, we understand many of you are very dedicated to certain sleeping postures. So in the beginning, that may be a little challenging, but you can work up to that. It doesn't matter in the beginning which posture you're in. Use whatever posture will assist you in going to sleep. And through cultivating a gentle awareness of that point, even though you may drift into sleep, your energetic muscle memory will recall having paid attention to that point. And even though you drift off, a dimension of yourself will say, oh yeah, wait a minute, I'm paying attention to that. And that will wake you up in the dream. Uh -huh. So intention setting before bed, visualizing before bed, journaling before bed about what you prefer to explore and experience on that astral level is of the utmost importance. So that way you can have a stronger sense of navigation when you become lucid in that realm. And when you become lucid in that realm, it may be very surprising at first. However, with repetition, you'll become more used to it. And you'll be able to, in a sense, go with the flow whilst on that realm, rather than being startled and waking yourself up. Brilliant. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. We have one thing we would prefer to share at this time. Please. For your world. Your species, as many of you know, is in contact with extraterrestrial beings. Many of you have seen craft in the skies. Some of you have seen this personally. Some of you have seen this through video footage. Some of these things are terrestrial. They are of your world. Some of them are not. Right now, your species is being visited by different hybrid beings, such as myself. We are extra dimensional in nature. We occupy a form of density that you would call a quasi-physical density, which means we have form, we have bodies, but they're not really solid like yours. We are in that sense more astral in nature. The hybrids that are making contact with you are more solid, they're more physical, but they also possess the abilities and technologies that enable them to shift between the different 
frequencies of dimensionality. So in a sense, they can blip in and blip out at will. They can conceal themselves or they can make themselves very well known. What determines the rate of contact is your own vibrational alignment and is your own open heartedness because that is truly the invitation for contact. That's how these beings determine whether or not on a personal or collective level, you are ready for open contact. The reason we are sharing this is because as you get closer to open contact, there may be many stories, many rumors, many narratives that are discussed and described. And you have the ability to determine your relationship to contact, your narrative, your story about what that process means for you. And this will allow for you to experience your preferred version of contact with some of these beings. You get to write that script. It's not pre-written. Because in a sense, nothing is pre-written, not in an objective sense. Things may be selected pre-incarnation that represents the themes you have chosen to explore. However, you get to determine how you explore those themes. And you do that through the meanings, the definitions, and the relationships that you create while exploring those themes. You are in control of that. That is a part of your autonomy. And you're doing it all the time. Every interaction you have is based upon the symbolic meaning you either consciously or unconsciously impose upon it. So this phenomenon is no different. And any theme that your species goes through is no different. You get to impose the meaning and that will determine your relationship to that thing. In other words, you get to determine the energetic quality of the effect produced through that experience. That is you. You are a thermostat in that sense. You get to adjust the settings. You don't have to be a thermometer, which is just a metaphor for being reactive unconsciously to things that emerge. So learn how in your own exciting ways to adjust your own thermostat settings, to adjust your states of being. You do that through your meanings. And ultimately you do it through the inner and outer actions that represent those meanings that you create. We thank you sincerely for your questions and for allowing us to share that message with your world. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for joining us and um, we, can, we can end there and, uh, and invite Tyler back. All right. Our unconditional love and appreciation to each and every single member of your human family and planet. Good day. Good day.